Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. It's the next part of my 3D printed R6 project. All of this is 3D printed, of course, apart from metal bits like motors and electronics. And all of it's available for download if you want to go and have a look at part 7a. You can get all the CAD files and all of the code for Arduino that runs it for free. Last time I put in some little utility arms with a kind of circular saw looking thing and a computer interfacing probe arm. But this time I'm going to be building a lifeform scanner and putting some more stuff in the head. In the head so far we have a few things. We have a hollow projector, which is on a servo and lights up. And we also have the periscope, which I did a couple of episodes ago, which uh, lifts up and lights up, has a little look around and goes back again. And I use the servo driving a drive belt here, which is made of actually NinjaFlex 3D printer filaments to um, drive the carriage up and down on a linear bearing. So I need to do something similar for the lifeform scanner, which is going to go in this side of the head, but it needs to lift much higher, so we need to make a two-stage lifter. When I did the periscope, I used um, a servo and I hacked the servo so it would turn more than 180 degrees and there's quite a bit of information in that video about how I then did the feedback pot which I removed and put externally. I've actually found a servo now which is multi-turn and these are sail winch servos which uh, basically turn multiple times and they're intended for model sailboats to winch in the sails and so on. So this one actually is a six turn servo, it comes with a little winch thing as well to pull a string. So this uh, will turn round and round and round and round and round and round and um, you can control it in exactly the same way only um, when you give it an angle it will turn much further really and it will do six lots of 360 degrees so this will give me much more travel if I'd known they existed I would have done this on the periscope um, but there we go so have a look on eBay for sail winch servos incredibly useful um, and I think this one is a six kilogram per centimetre of torque, which is more than enough to drive up a multi-stage lifter. I'm going to try and use a rack and pinion to drive the first stage of the lifter, and I'm using the gear library that comes with Autodesk 123D Design. Um, 123D Design is free, but you have to pay something like $10 a month for premium subscription to get access to the library. And there's some other things like nuts and bolts in there, as well as gears in different angles. So I'm using the 30 degree gears here, which look just about right. I've got an 8 tooth spur gear and the matching rack. So I'm going to try and print these out first and see how well they mesh. Obviously the spur gear will be driven by that multi-turn servo and that has 8 teeth and the 100mm rack has 10 teeth. So I should easily be able to push a much longer rack. In fact I've probably got too many turns on my servo but um, at least that gives me the option to run it right to the end wherever I need to. So let's get those printed and see how well they work. So here are my 3D printed gears, um, they seem to mesh okay basically, it's quite hard to tell but um, whichever way I do it, so I can uh, put something in here and whoops, do this and obviously they'll be fixed um, properly. What I probably have is two wheels the other side here, so when this turns it pushes the rack up and down, uh, pushing the rack against the gear, um, these things will be wider and in a nice channel so they don't pop out and things. So a normal servo only does 180 degrees, which would only be four teeth out of the eight on this gear. So it would only move a tiny amount. Um, obviously the servo I've got here does 360 degrees and does it six times. So I should be able to drive um, almost six lengths of this with that servo. So there we go, at least eight teeth out of the ten six times. So this looks like it's going to work okay. So let's have a look at the CAD for the whole thing, including the second stage of the lifter. This is the basic principle of how this thing is going to work. So the blue block here is the servo with the gear on, and that's running in the track. Then inside that we've got this red part, which um, is the second stage of the lifter. And the idea is that's pulled up on a string, so right in the bottom here we have a hole for a screw. And at the top we have some pulleys, and uh, basically a string is going to pull all the way over that pulley and back down to the bottom, and the string will be attached to something in the head. So as the first stage lifts, the grey one, it pulls the string tighter and pulls up the red stage. Now I've had to make this much shorter than I'd actually anticipated. I was hoping to get a um, nearer 200mm track, in fact this is about 110mm, um, and that's so that I've actually got space to put the lifeform scanner on top of the thing, which obviously all has to fit inside the head. So this whole assembly is about 120mm tall, and that gives me 80mm to actually build the scanner on top, so that the whole thing retracts in the head. Otherwise, if this red thing matched the top of the head and it was much taller, 
and then obviously a stick would poke up and there'd be no space to actually put the thing on top. The two blue rollers on the other side is to brace the grey part against the pinion gear. So uh, I do need to make a mounting bracket that holds the servo and those rollers and that should be the entire mounting for the entire thing. But I'm going to get these parts printed and we'll see um, what it looks like before I design the mounting bracket and the bit on top. Here are the first few parts, so I've got my um, the first lifter with the track there and the gear on the servo that turns in it to lift it up and down and I've got the little rollers on and the internal piece I've got this piece of 3mm studding so obviously the string will go around these pulleys and back down and as this moves up of course the string will pull tighter and that will pull the second stage up and the whole thing is driven up by the servo so now I've got um, the other wheels as well so these have got Ninja Flex coatings on and they will run on the other side to brace this against the gear on the servo. So now I just need a bracket to hold the whole thing together. The red part here is the bracket which of course holds all of this together. So that allows the grey part with the red part inside to slide up. Um, and at the moment that bracket looks like it's floating there and eventually there'll be another bracket that holds that onto the head. But I have to decide exactly where that fits based on what's on top and the clearance that I need at the bottom. So I'm going to be printing this into multiple parts so that I can print it flat on the bed and then it will be solvent welded together. So I've got the two parts there that will be printed and that should make the whole bracket. Once the mechanism works we can see how it all fits together. So I printed out that bracket and I've attached my rollers so they've just got two bolts that go all the way through to hold it that side. I put a little runner thing on here to help hold this thing straight. I've got the pulleys on and I've got the string on that goes all the way under and I've just got two screws in the bottom that anchors that uh, bit of string there. Just hook that back on its pulley. So uh, now when I turn the gear here to push this up of course the second stage extends as well as the string pulls tight all the way to the top which is about there so that works rather well and it goes all the way back in if you want it to so this is flush so that gives me about 150 mil of lift which is about 50 mil more than the periscope so it's not quite as much as I was hoping for, but obviously there are two stages, so I get a bit more. What I could have done, of course, is had a third stage and had um, another one inside this one with another two pulleys and gone up another sort of 80 mil. But um, that'll do for now. So now I need to build the lifeform scanner piece to go on this end, which is going to have a servo that rotates it. And then I can fit that into the head. Here's my lifeform scanner top which sits on like this way on the top and spins round but it should also be curved so obviously I've printed this flat on the print bed and then stuck the back on to um, get this thing so it's got a round holder uh, but uh, I was going to try and print it like this and then try and print it curved but I was a bit worried about all the holes and obviously the strength of it so this is much stronger being printed flat um, so what I'm going to do is heat it up with a hot air gun and bend it into shape I've done this on a few parts before in my alien suit which is quite an easy way to contour pieces for the strapping system this is full of holes anyway so it should bend pretty easily I can feel it going see how that feels don't want to snap it so There we go. Oh, 
right not quite the best job I wanted to make of it but uh, as hot as well I have to reheat some of that I think that's almost the right shape so we just need a servo to rotate that on top Here's the top and I've just solvent welded the servo onto that stick and I've put this offset uh, kind of crank on here so this actually scans around and I've done that in orange because I was a bit bored of the grey and I wish I'd put some more orange parts on my other arms I did last time because they're all very grey so there we go so it makes it a bit more interesting this also offsets the top here so it actually um, folds down behind the head ring and um, I can actually get this in between the motor as the head goes round and the frame of the head I've installed the lifeform scanner on this block which is slightly angled and points it slightly in with the contour of the head. You can just see it there. So now if I hit the top yellow button on the transmitter, it should pop all the way up, have a scan around. And then pop back down again. which works rather well and I've quite enjoyed making this gear mechanism and I'm going to do some more things like that in the future. Here's a demo of all of the things that we've got so far so I'm going to try and activate them all in turn so there's utility arms, the head things, the body things, and the hollow projector. Alright, so that's the end of this video. That's actually the first time I've ever 3D printed a gear in a project, surprisingly enough. So I'm going to be doing some more of those in a future project. Look out for more robots coming. Okay, so don't forget to check back next time for more things on R6. We've got still quite a few things to add into it. And don't forget to check out my other projects as well. You can check out social media links in the description to this video for sneak peeks and updates. That's all for now.